So why don't you give these guys just a, a little bit more of an intro into where it is, how it got there, and, and why it's under threat now. Yeah, it's in an area called Amadora, um, on the outskirts of Lisbon. Um, and um, areas like this have existed um, around Lisbon um, for many, many years. Um, first, they were inhabited by people coming in from the countrysides, um, Portuguese people. And then after that, um, sort of in the 70s, when Portugal um, needed people to work in the con construction boom, a lot of people came over from Cape Verde, and many people lived in areas like this um, around Lisbon. Um, and now those people, um, I guess, are kind of seen as more expendable. Um, they've always been marginalized and ignored by um, the Portuguese government. But now in a time of austerity, when councils are trying to um, um, do whatever they, whatever they can to cut budgets and make money, they've sold the land um, that these people's homes are built on to a bank. Um, and they did have a rehousing project, which ended in 1992. And anyone who's moved into the area since then um, is not being rehoused, which is lots of people. Lots of people have been born since then and grown up in the area. Um, so there's lots of people who are um, being evicted, having their home destroyed, and not being compensated by the council in any way. Uh, yeah. And and how did you get involved with this project? And and how did you begin to you know feel out these characters, um, which I think are, personally I think is the strongest part about it. The characters you managed to find are they're, they're very intense. They they're very aware of what's happening to them. They're very eloquent when they talk about it. So tell us, how, how did you, you know, get, get catch a drift of the story and how did you find the people involved? Yeah. Um, I was just visiting my friend, uh, Katarina, who I'm making the film with, um, and she was getting involved with a, a group called Habita, which is working um, to try and um, get some kind of compensation from the council for these people. Um, and we went along to um, Santa Filomena and I had my um, DSLR with me and just kind of filmed some little snippets. Um, people were really friendly. I met Carlos, uh, who's the second interview, um, the first day there. Um, and people were really friendly and really um, up for me coming back and doing more work and making a, a longer piece. Um, yeah, people were very keen to have a record and um, a memory of, of the place, especially now that they've kind of accepted that um, the neighborhood is going to be demolished. And, and maybe as well, because when you first sent me the information in the film, um, you, you know, it was, it was evident in there that you wanted to have some of the footage shot by the inhabitants, so it's not just entirely filmed by you. There are, there are bits and pieces that are filmed by the inhabitants. And obviously the first uh, interview, he talks about filming and photographing the process of doing that. Um, so can you tell us why you made that decision? Um, can you tell us maybe, you know, which parts of the film we've just seen, if any... Uh, our footage is footage shot by the inhabitants and, and where that idea came from and, and how it manifests in the film. Uh, um, yeah, that's kind of not been as part, much of the part of the film as I hoped initially. Um, some of the people who, um, at the end of the, um, the shot, the projection on the wall, that was done by El and a friend of his. Um, and the friend of his has moved to a different part of Portugal and we've lost contact with him. So some of the people who I was hoping was going to be involved in that have moved on. Um, so yeah, it's not as instrumental as I hoped. I wanted it to be more that people would have, um, yeah, control over what they were filming, and um, it would be they would feel a part of this process, so that um, the end result they would have some ownership over, uh, which is happening. I'm um, talking with people about the kind of film that they want to come out of it, um, and that's kind of directing me in the filmmaking process. Um, and then while I'm there, um, I kind of always have time where I'm just hanging out and I give the camera to whoever wants to film their own stuff with it and kind of mess around. Um, but yeah, it's not as structured as I initially intended it to be. Have we got any questions for Ryan at this point? Yeah, fire away. So uh, just for the people at the back who couldn't hear the question, um, 
question was, did you have any trouble filming the demolitions, the security and what have you? How did they treat you when you were seen filming them? Um, I didn't, the times I was filming demolitions. Um, yeah, the times I was there, there, I didn't see any police. Um, I think because it was a home that being demolished where the people had already moved out. Um, but yeah, in the footage, there have been times where there have been a really heavy police presence. Um, I haven't included any footage there because I'm waiting to get it from Ill. Um, but there is footage of early demolitions and evictions where people were forcefully removed from their homes. Um, there's some, yeah, kind of ripped out by their hair and all that stuff strewn out on the floor. Um, and so that's why the police presence was there because, um, yeah, people weren't accepting it. Um, but now it's kind of, it's towards the end of the demolition process. And so people are much more kind of accepting of what's happening or kind of sort of, um, yeah, yeah, they've kind of accepted. Are there any other questions for Ryan? How did you record the sound? How did you record the sound? Um, I recorded the sound with a shotgun mic plugged into the camera. Um, so very basic. Uh, it's just me filming. Um, and so, yeah, just very basic sound. Um, and, yeah, I haven't done any sound editing or anything like that yet. It's all quite rough still. Um, yeah, I mean, it's worth saying, isn't it, this is still a work in progress at the moment. You're in the middle of uh, crowdfunding that, is that correct? And maybe uh, tell the guys about, you know, how you're funding it, how you're going to, and what, you've, what, rest, what the rest of the, the, the shooting plan is for this film. Okay. Um, I've raised some funds, um, not that much. Um, and so if anyone has any ideas about how to get money, that would be great. Because <laughs> You can all much. tell us that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I've got enough for me to keep going over and making uh, probably two more trips um, is how long I'm going to spend shooting. Um, I'm going to, yeah, the character L, his home has actually been demolished now, so I'm going to follow up with him and see how he's getting on now that he's left Santa Filomena. Um, yeah. And I mean, uh, without perhaps spoiling like what you're going to be filming in the future, and if you know anybody sees this when it's when it's all finalised, what what is happening to the people once they've had their houses knocked down? What what are they doing? Um, I mean, if there's no government program to rehome them, what are they doing to to house themselves? Um, well, family ties in Portugal are very strong, um, and essentially, when the government cuts things, they just are expecting the family structure to pick up that slack, uh, and that's what's happening here. Is people move in with um, family, extended family, um, and so you get overcrowded, um, small homes, um, and yeah, I mean, it's a real issue because um, people, the, the neighborhood was a support structure for, for everyone, um, and unemployment there, unemployment in Portugal is massive, and it's in these neighborhoods, it's even higher, so they didn't have to pay rent when they owned these homes, and now that they have been moved out into the private sector, they've got to pay rent. They're still unemployed. Um, there's no doll in Portugal after like a few months. So yeah, it's, uh, it's tough for people. Um, yeah, uh, Eo is unemployed and Carlos as well, but he can um, deal drugs. So yeah, he's doing, he's doing finance, okay. Yeah. I think so. yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, are there any other questions for Ryan? Yeah, we've got one down here. What kind of places are the people who live in Santa Filomena from? Um, Cape Verde. Um, they're from kind of similar neighborhoods in Cape Verde. Um, yeah, sort of working class areas. People have come over to do construction um, and cleaning jobs and things like that. Um, but yeah, I couldn't say too much about their life in Cape Verde, really. Um, there will, that will be more of a part of the, the story as I get interviews translated which is a long process. OK, if there's any more questions. Yeah, we've got one more in the middle. Um, you said earlier that the project today has quite a lot of people back here um, to the police. Does that mean that your intent wasn't originally to do a feature film? So, so, something different? So, were you, so did you always intend to shoot a longer feature piece? Uh, no, I intended to. I, just, I was just going over to visit friends and just wanted to film something. Um, just to, just for, I don't know, enjoyment. Um, and yeah, came across them, and it kind of just grew from there, and um, the story kept developing every time I came back. It kept getting bigger and bigger. Um, and so no, I wasn't really intending on it in the beginning, but then I sort of felt like um, 
to do it justice, it had to kind of be longer. Okay, cool. Well, um, maybe tell these guys where they can find out more information, where the Kickstarter is, or where they can see more clips of this. I know you've got a Vimeo. Uh, why don't you tell these guys where they can see more? Um, you can see more at uh, my Vimeo page. Uh, if you type in Ryan Powell on Vimeo um, and look for a picture of a boat, then there's more clips on there. Or I have a blog, which I will get around to updating, um, which is listed on the pamphlets. Uh, it's flesh and stone blog at wordpress.com. Um, and the Kickstarter's over. But if you want to give me money, then that's cool as well. <laughs> you can find him at the bar. All right, cool. Thank you. Give Ryan a round of applause.